Well, he was an educator. And once he started taking his dancers around the country, he started locally, of course, and then went in within the state of Colorado and then added to that longer trips, including in 1939 or so, a trip to Washington, D.C., where he burst out with American Square on this v relatively staid <laughs> program of, of folk dancing, which had never seen anything quite like this before. And when he, when he, he did that, that set the, the tone for that whole trip, and he went back on that trip through Chicago and worked with the Chicago Recreation Department and, and, and there influenced a great number of dance leaders who were calling squares, but mostly of the Henry Ford and so on style. And he then returned home. Wow, he became flooded with letters from, from people, leaders and so on. How do we learn this dancing? How do we learn what to do and how to call it? This is overwhelming. Well, then in 1940, he decided to hold a summer class. It was made up entirely of Chicago Recreation Department people. And there was, there was one man and 28... 29, 30 women who came to Colorado Springs to learn how to do this dancing. That was the beginning of his summer classes. In 1941, he held another one. And which was then, which was huge. It was like 60 people. There with were a three lot, men. A lot of yeah, right. <laughs> Triple the number of men. <laughs> but uh, that was cut short by. Pearl Harbor and so on. So he didn't wasn't able to have anything more until 46 when he set them up again. And this time he, he began to have multiple dance weeks during the course of the summer. The June week was for first timers. The July week was for those who had been there before but still wanted to, to learn more. And the August week for those who were well versed in dance leadership of all kinds and he didn't just call squares or, or teach them how to call squares. He went through the whole nine yards of American social dance, community social dance. So he was doing round dancing and all sorts of stuff in addition to square dancing and talking about the history of, of dance as he viewed it and why people feel the need to dance and what value it is to people to do dancing and to gather together and socialize in that sort of way. What is it about music and movement and, and doing that at the same time with other people who are cooperating with you to get this to work? What, what does that mean to you as a, as a community? What help is it for you? And so what should your aims as a leader be? in gathering people for this purpose. It's, it's not to aggrandize the caller, it's to serve the people and what is it that they need so that you can supply that for them. In a sense, it, he was building into these leaders a way to foster and promote and continue the community dance activity, particularly in the West where, where it was starved for such an activity. He made a great impression and um, because of that, because of the depth of his commitment and the depth of his teaching to people, to the leaders, they came away completely changed from going in. The, the Chicago people who were so enthralled by the, the excitement of the square dance and its newness to them came away f com quite a bit changed in their whole attitude to this program. This is, it's not just the excitement of, of square dancing that we want to, to promote. It's, it's much deeper and broader than that. And so we need, we need to learn 
we need to become students of this phenomenon, of this tool that we have to, to, to do things for people that they can't do by themselves without someone to help them do it because they've forgotten their roots. Mm -hmm. They've drifted away from the natural community activity that they might have had if they had lived a hundred years before somewhere else in the country. So that was his great service to the square dance activity and one of the reasons why it became so powerful and so popular. It answered a need, probably several needs amongst people. And he had, as a result of this word of mouth advertising that resulted from his influence on these people, it resulted in many, many callers coming to him who were beginning to get involved in community dance and square dance and so on because they'd heard it elsewhere and they'd picked it up and begun to do it on their own and then they heard Oh, you went to Lloyd Shaw. That's where you learned that. Well, I guess I'd better go. And so people signed up, and they signed up for years and years and years. And so they graduated from the June to the July to the August. And, of course, it was from the August group that when he died in 58, 59, he, uh, they, they wrote to, to Dorothy and said, Dorothy, I know this is a hard time for you, but we're going to come anyway, so be prepared. And so they came that August. He died in May, and they came in August, and they held the first of what we came to call the, the Lloyd Shaw Fellowship. And that eventually, in 64, generated the Lloyd Shaw Foundation. The Lloyd Shaw Foundation being an, a, a, an educational foundation to help teachers to teach dance. Lloyd Shaw was an educator. So when he approached these leaders coming in, he approached them as educators and taught them how to teach others. So he was laying seeds and the dance, little dance building that's on the Shaw property in La Colorado Semilla. Springs is called La Semilla, which is the seed in Spanish. So that's where that came from. The foundation is still going. It's, a, it's an active organization. So that's Lloyd Shaw and, and his role in modern square dancing. I mean, he wasn't teaching people to dance. He wasn't teaching people to lead dance. He was, he was, he was building converts to a mission. Yeah, he was teaching I mean, people how to be people, how to be human, and how to know other humans and associate with them and build together a community of human beings. That's what dancing is about. That's what you always talk about when you have your little opening talk here at Grasstown at the start of a weekend or a, or a week, you know. Oh, it's worth this, it. This is why we're here. It sets the tone, yeah, because people, they'll come for, for being entertained or they'll come for for socializing with friends and so on. But if they're told the real fundamentals, roots of why they're coming, why they were inspired to come, why they felt like they wanted to come, then they'll go away a different person. Because they'll look at the dance and the people that are there in a different way. <laughs>